Hello, and welcome to my March 2023 Scrappy Recap. I used to do these recap videos back in the day when I was scrapbooking more, and I'm scrapbooking a little bit more, so I thought I would start to do these. These, my intention is to post them every month. I'm not sure that I'll be able to get to them each and every single month, but I'm going to try because I love having a look through my pages before I put them into an album. And what I've been doing is I keep all of my completed layouts in this tray over on a Jetmax cube over in my scrap room and I am filming a new scrap room tour so keep an eye on my channel because that is coming it's just taking me a little bit of time to edit it so I have all of my projects here from the month and I thought I would just kind of jump in and start to share them with you most of them are not in page protectors but this one because it was a different size I had to trim down the page protector and I just wanted to make sure that I had something behind it so I quickly scrapped a second page here and so this is my second last page that you will find on my channel. This one might not be public yet. Uh, what I do is I give early access to my Patreon members. So all of the tiaras have seen this one, but if you haven't seen it yet, it should be coming soon. And I did keep the process video for both of these together because this one was just a very quick add-on. It's just a piece of uh, cards of pattern paper with a matted photo and a title and one tiny little embellishment and a caption. So this was super easy and fast to do and I was really happy to get a chance to use this paper. This is from Vicki Booten's Sweet Rush collection which I adore and it fit with this color scheme that I had picked way back at the beginning of the month which you will see as I kind of work backwards in reverse chronological order but this color scheme was picked to go along with a lot of these photos have these colors of green and yellow. This one was super fun to make and super fast to make. This one on the other side looks like it would have been super fast to make, but it actually, it took a couple of different design turns in the process and it did take me a little bit longer than it looks like it would. It took me about as long as a, as a layout usually takes, which uh, this one is quite a bit more, less embellished than most of my pages. This one is called And Getting Caught in the Rain. And this one was using this color palette. This one was using this color palette, although this turquoise color doesn't really show up. And I do have a video explaining what these are and where they come from. Spoiler alert, this is the Sarah Renee Clark color cubes that I'm using most of the time. And then this other homemade color palette is from the Coolers app. So you can check those out in the meantime, but I do have a video coming to explain how I've been using those two products. So this is the color palette that inspired this one. And if you watch the process video for this one, finding this embellishment was a joy and a, a bit serendipitous. And I think that it works perfectly in the space and it picks up on all those colors and I just adore it. I'm so pleased with the way that this page turned out. It was very fun to make. Then we have this one, which also came from this color palette right here, although it doesn't have the blue. The blue is the sky in this one. And for this one, I hand stamped the background paper using a stamp set that I have, a brunch stamp set, and craft colored ink. I think I used crumb cake from Stampin' Up. I might have used Sahara Desert. This one was really fun to make as well, and I really want to do more of these craft tone-on-tone -tone stamped backgrounds. I have so many stamp sets, and this is a really great way to use, to use them and to kind of showcase them, but not in a kind of labor-intensive kind of a way. There are process videos for all of these, and I will link them in a playlist up in the top corner right here, so you can check out all of March's projects at the same time. Oh my goodness, this layout is probably my favorite layout that I've made in a long, long time because it was just so much fun to make. It felt like the old days of scrapbooking. Uh, I don't know what, what it is about it, if it's the doodly sewing in the background or the splatter or just the combination of lots and lots of pattern paper. This project feels very quilt-like to me. 
Oh, I just love it. It makes me feel cozy and warm inside. So that's exactly what your projects are supposed to do. The process of making it was really fun. And then every time I look at it, I feel really great about it. So I <laughs> just, uh, this is why we do it, right? Oh, I just love scrapbooking. So this one also used the same color scheme, only I just pulled from the dress in the photo. I added some pink to that page as well good example of how you can use a color scheme to guide you but you don't have to be married to it this is the first layout that I made using this color this color palette and I actually used a copy of the color palette as a design element on the page I've done this before I used to use the coolers app years ago and so I I have used these color palettes as design elements in project life and also on on 12 by 12 pages and I just adore them there's something about a paint chip that I just really, really love. And so you see there's very, a lot of similarities between these two with the strips of paper in the background, but yet they have really different looks and feels to them. This one, because I restrained from using the splatter, it has a bit more of a clean look. And what gives this page some personality is this a bit of a wonky matting that happens on it where it's over only on, over on the side and then there's a little chunk out of it right here that's just because that's all that I had left of that paper so I just kind of cut it down and used it as a as an edge on two sides instead of all the way around it next we have the second layout that I made using this color palette and this one was fairly simple. It came together super quickly. There is a process video about it, even though it is a fairly straightforward, simple layout, has lots of journaling, and I just really like it. Love the photo. My friend Diane convinced me to scrapbook this one, and I'm so glad that she did because I just love it. It really shows how serene the beach was, and it was very serene. It was not crowded at all. We went to the Dominican Republic. We went to Samana and it was, oh, it was so amazing. We had such a great time. Then this is the second, the first layout that I created using this color scheme right here. And I just, all of these layouts are from my stash. So uh, this one was mostly scraps. In fact, most of these layouts are mostly made from scraps. A few of them have some new product, although it's just new to me. It's, it's not new new product it's Vicki Booten's sugar rush collection or sweet rush collection which has been out for well, well over a year I think and the Paige Evans editing Tracy in here now to say that it was the Paige Evans splendid collection so this page was a lot of fun to make I did customize the letter stickers with a marker because they were I don't remember what color they were, but I wanted them to be brown to just kind of pick up on the brown elements in the page. And this one was a lot of fun. This one feels old school as well. I don't know, maybe it's the craft paper that's giving everything an old school look. I did spend an evening making cards. Oh, no, I spent one evening making two cards, and then I spent the next morning making the rest of these. So I can't remember which were the original two, but... I used stamp a Stampin' Up stamp set. <clears throat> I think it was called In the City. And what I love about these cards is I always do this. This is why it takes me a long time to make cards because they have a little stamp on the inside. They have my little name on the back and then a little stamp on the side of the envelope as well. I just love doing those little extra details. It, what's, it's what makes making cards fun for me. So that's what I do. And I just have different color variations. And then this is a project from Doodlebug, Doodlebug Design that I made at Crop and Create. So it's pretty cool, actually. If you ever get a chance to do one of these projects, they're really fun. It was the make and take for the, for the crop. So it was included with your for the for the crop and the way that it works is you get this piece and a piece of vellum and you just tape it over with a hinge like this and then you get all of the embellishments they come in three different packs like there's a pack of enamel dots 
and shapes, a pack of stickers, and a pack of, I don't know, about like two different packs of stickers or something. I can't quite remember. They're all printed out like that. And then you just put them down and it's super easy. You just follow the design on the back and you can see it because the vellum is see-through. And then when you're finished and you want to frame it, you just put this behind it. It's just a piece of plain white cardstock. Get rid of this. And then you can frame it in a square frame, which I believe Doodlebug sells the frames for it too. But you could just get a frame from Michaels that would probably be cheaper. So I just keep it in its packaging because I haven't bought a frame yet. I'd like to buy a frame because I think it's really pretty and I'd love to put it in my craft room, but I just haven't yet. Also, once you have your frame, you can actually change this out because every year they make new ones and so you and they sell them as a kit so you don't have to buy the products individually so that's that and then i did make two pages at crop and create so i made this one that says a door and this was using the hard eyes collection from simple stories this one i just I'll, uh, there's no process video for this one because I made it at a crop so I'll just tell you what I did these little hearts along here were pieces of were a strip of hearts from the pattern paper there was a pattern paper that's basically just all these hearts so I just fussy cut them out and stapled them along the bottom of my photo which I printed and cut so that it had a bit of a longer border a bigger border on the bottom here. It almost looked a little bit like a Polaroid, but it wasn't quite the right proportions. And then this is from the titles thicker pack that comes with that. That's part of that collection. And then these are die cuts from the collection. And these are all die cuts from the collection as well. I think I got two packs of die cuts. I had a couple of extra hearts. So I just punched them or stapled them up there, matted the whole thing on this black and white paper, which I loved. So I did gut it so I could use it again. And that was it for this one. And then this one I also scrapped at Crop and Create. And the the collection came with a piece of paper that was all hexagons. And so I fussy cut out a bunch of hexagons and then I traced one to just kind of put my journaling also in a hexagon there and just place them in three different places. I have a bit of a border here and a bit of a border up here. This was a sticker from the sticker set that goes with the collection. And these are thickers that I think I bought at the crop. That is what I created from a scrapbooking and card making perspective. I also did a couple of pages in my media journal. So I sped this up because it was a little bit too chatty. Okay, let's admit it. It was a lot too chatty. So I cut out a whole lot of it and I sped it up. But here are the pages that I did in my media journal. So that first one and this one, the ones in between I did not do at the Crop and Create. But uh, this, I just used my stamps and some washi tape and a photo of the girls playing the game Pandemic. And uh, then I use my stamps to document the countdown to the sequel to Breath of the Wild. And then I created this one, which is really different for me. So I wanted to really show it to you, uh, which proves that you can try new things and have fun with uh, some products that might be outside of your comfort zone. This is a spread that I've been wanting to do a long time about who watches which shows in our family. So I'm taking a different approach to Project Life this year and I am doing, it's basically like a slice of life is what I'm calling it. And what I'm doing is I am documenting one week each month instead of documenting every week of the month. So this is the week that I did for January. It was week three, January 16th to 22nd. There's a process video. This is February. Uh, which I did in, I, I'm pretty sure I scrapbooked this in March, which is why I'm including it here. So this is the Project Life spread that I did. Every month I'll be doing one week from the, from the month before. <clears throat> and so this is week eight in February. It was the 19th to the 25th, and I'm pretty sure I scrapbooked it somewhere around here, around the 1st of March. 
And there is a process video for this one if you didn't catch it. And if you like Project Life process videos, you can check that out. And now this page here for the month of March, I'm going to scrapbook today. So that's it for my projects. I'm just going to go put those 12 by 12s into their albums. Take care and have a really great scrappy week. Before I leave, I just wanted to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen and keep it going. So big thanks to all of them and thanks to you as well. If you're interested in seeing any of the process videos for the layouts that I just shared, check out the playlist that was shared at the beginning and in a card or check out any of these other videos on my channel and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.